Welcome back to the channel. If you want to see how we turn this into this, stick around. And uh, we'll explain this situation at the end. So uh, stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Uh, today, I'm uh, trying to piece back together the T2. I didn't film a lot of the cleaning of the parts. Uh, we gave all the plastics a good uh, simple green bath. And as I piece it together, I'm going to get as far as I can with these uh, stainless screws. We're going to change all the screws out. Uh, it has some blue hardware. It has some steel hardware. Um, we got some blue stuff in the transmission. It's just kind of mismatched. I don't mind the blue because it is aluminum and it's lightweight, but uh, not super concerned about those few grams. Um, I did have to rebuild the diff. I did not film that. Uh, my buddy Chris did um, donate a diff gear and a rebuild kit, and this is the old one out of it. It felt pretty crunchy, and uh, we got it all put back together, all silky smooth now. Um, new um, thrust bearing, the one you have to put together with all the little balls and the grease, uh, the one that doesn't come pre-assembled like the new cars do. Uh, so we got that back together. We cleaned up the outdrives with uh, Scotch-Brite and got a little surface rust off of them and uh, replacing these screws with stainless. Um, I don't have a new gasket. I might, I don't think it's super necessary to have it in there, but we, we may just glue this back together. Just a little touch CA right there and uh, reuse that. Getting this transmission buttoned up and then once it's buttoned up, uh, we can start putting stuff on our freshly painted chassis and get that uh, get that thing rolling again. So uh, let's get to work. All right, we got the case together. Uh, we got our first uh, slipper pad on. I do not have a new slipper. Uh, but it appears to be in good shape. It's not worn down excessively. It doesn't really don't have a mark on it uh, either side. So we're just going to go with it. And I uh, think we'll be okay. I did put a little bit of grease in the transmission. I don't know if you're supposed to grease the stealth. Uh, I mean, I just put a light coating because it was bone dry. And it still feels pretty slick. Uh, I think it'll get slicker as we run just because the grease is going to break down, but uh, that's been pretty free. Um, it had a 90 on there. I'm going to leave the spur gear off because I'm not sure what um, exactly what we're going to need to run uh, with the, uh, I believe the trucks in the vintage class for 17.5, I think. Uh, so, I'm not sure what uh, spur we need, so we're going to leave that off for now. And, uh, yeah, I think we're about ready to start bolting some suspension together. And first, I'm going to change this arm out. Man, I'm rusty. How much you want to bet I just put this thing together backwards? I sure did. Uh, I'm going to hop off and fix that right quick. Uh, this bulkhead is supposed to be that away. All right, I'm not sure why I didn't catch that, but uh, shock tower mounts on the back side. That would have been the telltale sign. And I didn't catch it, so now we're back on the right track. Get this front end together. All right, there we go. That's more like it. Uh, I'm not going to get real far because I still got to get. Uh, I'm going to put new ball cups on this to match the RC10, and uh, we're going to be highly invested in RPM ball cups here lately because we're going to get another set to build our 10T. Um, there's our front end. Uh, the back ought to be as easy or easier. Make sure I don't put the shock tower on the wrong side. That appears to be correct there. And uh, yeah, let me uh, hop back on here once we get the shock tower put together. And then uh, we'll start bolting this up to the chassis. All right, we got our uh, rear bulkhead mocked up. You got two countersunk screws that go through here that go into the transmission and uh, like so and we'll do that once we get it in the car um, need to replace these two screws uh, one by one I'm just changing out screws for uh, 
stainless just so they match. Um, not super necessary. These blue screws are fine. I just want everything to match. And there's not a whole lot of weight difference between the two, so I'm not too worried about adding weight or um, hampering any kind of performance modification we got here. I think we're good to go. And again, uh, the vintage classes to me are more of a fun thing than it is. I mean, it's competitive, but it's more of a fun thing. All right, uh, there's all of our stainless screws uh, changed out there. We do have some countersunks. I didn't know I had. I just found them. And uh, I think we're ready to put this thing on the chassis. So let's uh, get the old chassis out. All right, we made pretty good progress yesterday. Um, everything's cleaned up, ready to go back on the car. Um, we're just going to get it rolling. Uh, we got a set of J Concepts wheels and the smoothies, the low profile slicks. Um, at least get it rolling today. I don't have any electronics for it yet. Uh, we got to concentrate on this in the next couple of weeks because I got like three weeks before this uh, we're going to run it. Uh, so still got to get the body painted. I was going to do that today, but uh, we're going to get this thing rolling, get the bench cleaned off. So uh, let's get to work. Uh, it's pretty simple now. I'm just replacing, like I said yesterday, I'm replacing all the screws with stainless. And... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We just cleaned everything, uh, did rebuild the diff. I'm repeating myself now because I haven't talked about that yesterday. So uh, let's get to work. All right, uh, I'm going to hop off and uh, we'll come back once we got a little bit more progress here. Um, because it's just a lot of repeating steps. Uh, next, we're going to do the transmission and then the rear motor guard. So. Uh, not a whole lot of action here, so still a couple screws in the bottom here, and uh, you know what? No, oh, no, I'm good. Thought I had to put my suspension on first, but uh, yeah, I'll throw a couple more screws in. We'll come right back. All right, this uh, chassis has a relief, and the transmission is kind of fixed into it. Uh, with all the paint built up, with I uh, put like two or three coats of clear coat on this. Uh, we did have to clearance the hole. Uh, the transmission wouldn't go through the square perfectly fine. So uh, we just cleaned it out with the exacto and uh, popped right in place. Um, I'd imagine you may have the same issue if you would have got your chassis powder coated. Um, so it does change the tolerances a little bit just by adding that thickness of the coating. Um, so pay attention to all the mounting surfaces and... Uh, how things line up after you get painted or um, I said most likely most of y'all get these things powder coated if anything um, but yeah had a little build up around the edges and it wouldn't quite fit in so but we got her in there now all the screws lined up uh, next up is the motor plate I've already had this mocked up on the chassis I did leave an edge that's mated to the other part of the chassis here um, I left it I had to tape it to something to paint it so um, there's not a lot of material here, so there's no issue with that lining up, so all that fits good. So uh, I'll throw a couple screws in here, and the back end will be pretty much complete, minus suspension. We're going to leave the suspension off, the arms anyways, until we get the shocks done, because I don't want stuff flopping around too much while we're trying to work on it. But uh, yeah, there you go. All right, we're going to pop back in with the nose plate. Uh, these are kind of some specialty hardware here. Uh, I don't know how easy it would be to find replacements or not. Uh, the screw is threaded at the bottom. It has the, uh, the smooth section for your steering rack, and then it has a 440 size um, nut that holds the steering rack together. Um, this side has the spring and the servo saver, so it's a little bit longer. This side here just rides on bearings, or not even on bearings, it just rides on the, the plastic. So uh, there's your uh, steering setup, and obviously you need a longer screw for the other side. So uh, we'll put a drop of thread lock on those uh, just so they don't come loose to secure the uh, front nose plate. And again, I don't know how easy it would be to find a replacement for those. So if you're taking one of these apart, don't lose those screws. Those are probably pretty critical. Up next, we're going to throw the front uh, bulkhead. It already has the arms on it, so it's going to be flopping around a little bit. 
All right, we got the front end on. Uh, let me move this a little bit. We got the front end on. We're going to add the nose brace tubes. Um, this truck does have adjustable wheelbase, but I don't know of anybody that's ever really ran one in long wheelbase. I'm not sure a body would even fit, to be honest. Uh, I am going to run a shorter screw. That one feels like it's threading in. I don't like that long screw, so we don't need all that. Got to flex it just a little bit because everything is kind of... Kind of snug and tight in there. Yeah, that one threaded in, no problem. And I'm assuming this nose one has got threads into the plastic. We're going to test that theory. If not, there's room to uh, run it through and put a nut on it if we had to. That don't look so bad with a little aluminum nut on there, does it? I don't think so. Uh, we're going to throw this other one on, and we'll come back once we got the rear on, then we'll go into the shocks. All right, uh, before we put the rear suspension on, um, I'm not going to reuse the blue hardware that it came with, although I probably could. Uh, I've dug through my box, and I found some of the older gold screws, uh, but some of them have hit the ground a few times. I got the heads knocked off of them a little bit. Uh, we are lightly chucking them up in a drill. And I got a piece of 220, and we're just going to spin it up. Just let it toss the head a little bit. There you go. Kind of matches my stainless look. Um, again, I'm being a little bit overly detailed, I guess, because we're going to run the thing. It's going to get scratched again. But uh, at least when we uh, show up, we're going to look good before we scratch it up. Yeah, normally you wouldn't tighten down a screw in, uh, in, a, in a drill. We're doing it super light, plus it's screwing into plastic. Um, we did not damage the threads at all. There is after the fact. But even if they got slightly damaged, I don't think it would be as big a deal because they're, they're threading into plastic. We're not threading into a nut, so it's not a machine surface. And it's super loose. So just enough to hold it. See, after it got done, I didn't have to unchuck it. It just kind of undone itself. So, uh, no damage done. Let's throw these on. All the suspension components on. Um, there's our refinished screws on the back. Uh, the front, I had some stainless. We may go back and do the same deal on the front because I don't like the way these stick up. Uh, and or it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to clean out these uh, countersink holes if I had a bit to clean out the paint. But uh, for anyways, uh, there's that. And I'll see if I can find four more screws. I'm not liking this front. And the only thing left to do on the front end wise, we got the body mount on. We got to throw the front bumper on. Uh, the bumper's a little bit rough, but I'm trying to keep in mind that this is going to be a runner. And it's going to get scratched, so no need to put a brand new bumper on there. It's not destroyed. It's just got some uh, usage on it. So next up is the linkages turnbuckles and i'm not going to film a lot of that because we're just swapping out the old uh, ball caps for the yellow ones and uh, nothing exciting to see there um, but we'll come right back uh, i'm going to try to find some screws off camera and uh, fix my ocds a little bit and fix those make them look a little better and uh, we'll be right back all right we're down to the last one uh, these things are wearing my fingers out um, just trying to get it close to where it was um, before I took it apart. Uh, we'll obviously have to do some setup once it's uh, all together and on the track. But just trying to get it general. So they're not too far towed out, too far cambered in. And uh, these new ball caps and these linkages are about as maxed out lengthwise they could almost stand to be a hair shorter uh, just so you could get a little bit better adjustment uh, but that's what was on it all right we're jumping into the shocks uh, the rear shocks do show some signs of leaking um, not excessive but they were a little wet and there was a little bit of buildup but they both still have oil in them 
and they still feel pretty good but we are going to take them apart and uh, I'm gonna leave the seals in them since because I don't have a seal kit uh, so we want to just basically drain them and refill them I've seen worse it's still partially clear So we're not, like I said, we're not going to take them apart because we don't have a rebuild kit on hand. So uh, just for video purposes, we're going to get this thing back on all fours, hopefully, today. All right, there it is. That is the uh, 30 weight that came with our uh, 40th. I don't have a big variety of shock oils because I hadn't raced in a long time. I hadn't built kits in a long time. And I have not raced off-road in actual race off-road in a long time, like years. Uh, we're going to repeat this process on the front shocks here in here. Um, I need to find some springs. Uh, not a big fan of the the colors were for the tension or the weight of the spring, but I kind of like the way they do it now, where they just put kind of a, a little uh, band at the base of the spring telling you what color it is. I don't like the whole Spring being that color it kind of throws off your uh, Vibe on your build here at least looks wise um, May try to find some uh, I don't know if a modern I don't know if there is a modern spring that'll fit on this or I'm sure I could find a spring but a variety of springs Because RC 10 just came with golds or silvers or goldish I don't know the diameter of the wire because they used to come with gold and silver originally. Um, gold was the heavier spring. Uh, I believe reds are pretty, uh, I don't know, for some reason I thought they were a little stiff. They either run greens or blacks back in the day. Um, so I don't have a variety of springs right now, so we're going to have to build it back with the reds. All right, guys, uh, there we go. We got a, uh, a chassis. Uh, the only thing that I didn't put in, I, I put my servo mounts in. We don't have electronics yet. Uh, I got part of the battery mount. Um, I don't have the strap that goes over it. It wasn't in the car when I bought it. Um, we may try to source uh, maybe another uh, battery mount like the uh, one we got in our gold pan. And I don't think the holes... No, there's not enough holes in the chassis. I'm not opposed to drilling holes if I have to. Uh, but I'm going to keep my eye out for a, a T2 battery strap because it will work with a LiPo with just a couple of foam blocks to uh, hold the battery in. Because most likely I'm going to run a shorty pack. So uh, if not, we'll look into something like this. There's a bunch of people printing stuff for RC10s. I'm sure there's a battery mount somewhere out there that will bolt into this. Uh, there's only one hole back here, and that's for the antenna, and then the front is the mount for the battery, and it has a strap. Uh, I don't have the strap. Uh, so I may look into trying to find the strap and just putting some foam blocks, like I said. And, uh, but that's not going to hold us up for now uh, because we're not going to run this thing anytime soon. Uh, this one's probably not going to be ran until this winter. So uh, just wanted to get it in roller form so we could have it looking pretty in the background. All right, for tires, I got the Smoothies, uh, J-Concepts Low Profile, and I got J-Concepts Wheels. The wheels are readily available, so is the tires, uh, but the wheels are um, 3 sixteenths. Uh, Jason Rona did reach out, well, my buddy reached out to Jason Rona, and he actually responded. Uh, they're not going to make a wheel for a 10T specific because it has quarter-inch drive with dog bones. Um, there are a couple of companies making the 316 universals uh, aftermarket uh, if you're going to run your 10T. But if you want to run these wheels on your 10T, uh, Jason simply said just uh, take a Dremel and uh, or a cone style bit and cone out this a little bit and maybe rim the hole slightly and it'll work. Because uh, the only difference is on the quarter inch drive it has a, I don't have one here to show you, but it just has a larger kind of a beveled end 
and uh, these will work with a little bit of handiwork on them. So um, before we build our 10T, uh, we're going to look at getting the uh, universals for it. But uh, yeah, let's throw these tires on there and get this thing on the ground, get it on all fours. Uh, you've seen the video with the body. If you hadn't, check that out. It's not painted yet. We retrofitted a 10T body to it. Uh, this is a unique truck because it's a one year only. Um, it was a transition between the aluminum tubs and the plastic chassis of the T3 and T4s. Uh, even the B2 did not have aluminum chassis. It had aluminum uh, tail section and a nose plate with a composite chassis. So this is a very unique vehicle. I don't understand why they hadn't gotten more popular than they have. Um, but um, that limits you on bodies because it was only a one year deal. And the shock tower is so much taller than on the T original T and the beds taller on the T2 body so we're gonna look and get in the blue groove body even though I modified the other one to fit and it looks fine uh, but we got enough time between now and the race time that uh, we can order a body and uh, have it here plenty of time to get it done all right if uh, if you're not a racer or uh, if you are a racer you already know this but uh, don't throw these bags away when you don't have your truck on display or you're not at the track it's a pretty good practice to clean your tires up and put them back in the bag. They are sealable, so uh, it's good to preserve them. You don't want them just sitting out getting dry for no reason. It's pretty toasty in here right now. It's 100 degrees outside, so it's probably 90-something in here. Uh, we'll probably take them off here shortly, but uh, you'll see this truck in the background for the next few weeks, months. Um, If I get concerned, I will uh, I will practice what I preach. I will put them up and put them in a bag. Or I may put the whole truck in a in a plastic bag. All right, there we go. Get this thing off the stand. Shock test. <clears throat> Don't have a lot of weight on it. Still feels pretty good. Got a little bit of air in one of these rear shocks. I always have one that gives me trouble. But they do feel really good. Um, I don't know if 30 weights what I need, but it's what we got. Uh, we do have a little bit of tow, like I said, when we were building the uh, linkages, so we can go out, which is a good thing. And we got pretty good camber, maybe a little bit too much, which is good because we can adjust it out. Uh, the rear needs to be turned in some. We still got a few threads left. So we're good to go there. But uh, there you have it. There's our restoration, sort of. Uh, we refreshed, restored. Um, here's all the rough blue screws that we pulled out. The rusty steel 440s. The old ball cups. Uh, all of these are still usable in, a, in an emergency situation. So I, got, I keep everything around. You never know when you need a screw or a nut. Uh, the blue nuts in here are in really good shape. Uh, nothing wrong with those at all. The screws got a little scratched up, but they could be polished. Um, and there's our antenna mount with the tube, which we may or may not need this, depending on what radio we run. Uh, most likely, we won't need an antenna. Um, there's our battery mount. We do need a strap. RPM gear cover. Got to replace these two screws. They're a little rusty. But uh, we're not going to do that yet because we don't know what spur gear we're running. We don't have a motor in it, so no need to build it with the motor guard on it. But uh, there you have it. It's a cool looking truck. Uh, one year only. Well, one model only. I'm sure they've run this for a little while, but uh, I believe it was 1995 when this came out. And uh, yeah, it's uh, really cool. So uh, let's wrap this thing up. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today's video. Hope you found that somewhat informative and or entertaining. Uh, I learned a little bit along the way myself. Um, like I said, this is a one year only or a one model only truck. Um, the buggies didn't come this way. It was just a truck only. Uh, and yes, this is paint. If you go back and look at the initial video where we painted the chassis, I've done it in the past. Uh, this is automotive base coat, clear coat. It's very durable. You can put it on your car and run down highway 80 miles an hour you can put it on an rc car uh yes it's going to scratch but we are going to run a uh, protective film on it and i think i mentioned in that video about running maybe a carbon fiber uh 
vinyl inside. So if we ever were to take the electronics out, we could just peel it out and uh, wouldn't take a chance of scratching anything. Uh, still may do that, but there was no need to do it uh, prior to bolting the, the bulkhead or the front nose plate on because if that had vinyl underneath it, just by sandwiching it down, cinching it tight, it would start to bubble up the edges and or start to shift it a little bit. Uh, so we'll just make a template out of a piece of paper, the shape of the nose plate and up to the rear bulkhead and lay it in there and we'll be perfectly fine. Uh, that'll give us some protection for wear and tear on the battery moving around. And uh, like I said, powder coat will scratch too. It's, it's very durable, but it'll eventually wear off. So I think we're going to be good. Uh, saves a lot of money because I know how to do this myself. I did it at work. Um, and uh, what's the story with all the 10 T's? Um, what happened there was, with all the distributor fiasco, uh, my buddy wanted one. He got nervous, so he ordered one direct. That was our first unboxing video, if you've seen that one. Well, our local hobby shop, Anderson RC, his distributor told him he's either going to get none, he's going to get one, or he's going to get nine. And my buddy was a little bit nervous about not getting one, so he ordered, like I said, he ordered one direct. We got it. Well, it turns out our local hobby shop got 10 of them. And I wasn't, I was losing interest. More controversy was on the internet. I was losing interest daily reading those posts. Um, so lesson learned there, uh, back off of the internet every once in a while and don't listen to all the noise. It's just a toy car. But uh, I told him to put my name on one. And then my buddy Eric that had to order this one, he wanted two because he wanted one to shelf and one to build. Well, we honored our... Uh, request for him to hold them so i purchased mine and then eric got uh, on the hook for two and he already had one so now he has three we're building one to race or to run we're building one might be a little controversial we're going to build one dirt oval we got the uh, factory works dirt oval shock towers we're just looking for wheels um pro line eliminators i need fronts uh I've seen three sets of fronts or pairs of fronts on the internet, on eBay. They're all for Losies. I don't think they would work. So if anybody's got some Eliminator or yellow wheels out there, let me know. Uh, that aren't mounted. I found those, luckily, a few weeks ago on eBay and only paid like 10 bucks for them. Um, but yeah, that's why we have so many 10Ts. That's my 40th that we built here. So that's the latest build video. If you go back and check that out, that was Sunday. Um, but uh, like I said, we got this one rolling. Um, we're going to run it at the vintage race in January, so no rush on getting electronics in it. Uh, plus, I need to get finish getting electronics in the RC10. We're going to run it next month in August. And also with the cat, uh, we may or may not run that one uh, at the vintage race. I'm a little bit nervous because parts seem like they're getting a little more scarce. Um, and the car's got some quirky things about it. So uh, stay tuned for 10T builds. Um, these are not like right on top of what we're going to do next uh they're in the background uh they will come uh, i got to build my or i got to paint my buggy body that was going to be today's video but i got caught up getting this thing rolling so um i got to get this painted before and like two weeks uh it's going to be jam and jay style um and that is the latest um so uh, appreciate everybody coming along and uh, hit that subscribe button and uh stay tuned for Whatever else we got going on here, we got a lot going on. So I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.